With nine movies, Ernest P. Worrell was a household name in the late 80s and 90s. Played by the late great Jim Varney, he started out as a completely goofy character in several commercials before Disney came along to give him his own film, and the way it happened is just wonderful. In 1985, there was a Disney-themed parade in Indianapolis, and Jim Varney was invited to come along in character. Whilst there, he was spotted by Disney executives who were amazed that he was getting more crowd reaction than Mickey goddamn Mouse. They knew they had something on their hands and had to get him on the big screen. It would later be moved over to Touchstone Pictures, but still, Ernest being more popular than Mickey Mouse? What a world we live in. Know what I mean? The movie was obviously enough of a financial success to warrant more films being made, but appallingly, Jim Varney was nominated for a Golden Raspberry Award for his first feature film portrayal as Ernest. What a travesty. That's right. Ernest is a handyman at Camp Kikaki, but his dream is to become a camp counsellor. All I can think of is just how much I now want an Ernest Friday the 13th crossover. Know what I mean? They wanted to make the film similar to the commercials by having Ernest break the fourth wall and interact with the camera. And he does do it a couple of times, but for the most part, Disney refused to allow it to become a frequent occurrence for some reason. The thing with these movies is to go in knowing what to expect. Of course it's not going to be the Shawshank Redemption. They're going to be stupid and silly, but they're fully aware and they're just having fun. There's just something amusing about the fact that Jim Varney is a professionally trained theatre performer and he uses his talent to play a bumbling moron in ridiculous comedies. It's Ernest doing what he does best. Expect him to mess up everything he touches. Expect him to do a whole lot of goofy mugging to the camera to entertain the kids watching. It's Ernest being Ernest, and Jim Varney is always spectacular at it. He's a thrill to watch and was a damn national treasure. The movies are basically live action cartoons. Don't expect a lot of logic. It's ridiculous, and they know they're ridiculous. When you've got parachuting turtles attacking construction workers, yeah, they're just having Having fun, so just enjoy it. But that doesn't mean it's not funny because Jim Varney was a comedic gem and we get a lot of hilarious moments. Real men can take it and I am a real man. A man with a hearty smile, a stout back, with grit in his teeth and nails in his knuckles. A man who has never tasted quiche. Is that your smallest needle? Naturally, the kids all pick on Ernest and how can you not sympathise with him no matter how much he screws things up? They send a bunch of criminal delinquents to the camp and it's just funny to me because they're treated like they're the feared ones, but they're all about ten. Well, this one's like five. What did they do, steal someone's yoghurt? And of course they decide to send the dumbass on his own to collect the criminals. They cover his eyes and nearly cause a crash. What did you expect? It's Ernest. Of course he gets blamed for it, but look at his face, man. He could literally set your house on fire on purpose and you'd still feel sorry for him and you'd apologise. But I just can't get behind these kid characters. They're rugrats and are treated like the damn T-Birds. Half of the other kids are older and more intimidating. I just want one clean shot at Blondie. And then I'm gonna tape over his football game with my favourite episode of the Power Rangers. The five-year-old can't swim, so the damn counsellor actually chucks him in the water anyway. You know, I would feel more sorry for the kid if it wasn't for the fact that 20 seconds earlier he shoved someone else in. How did he know if he could swim or not, the little dick? The counsellor is a prick and they all shove him in and injure his leg, but I can't root for them either. The only one we can really support is Ernest. And this means they have no choice but to make him a counsellor to look after the criminals. You'd think that this is a transitional piece for the characters to develop, and it tries to be, but it doesn't really work. Firstly, why would they then trust Ernest again to be left alone with them in the middle of the woods? They just humiliate him another time. They hustle him at poker for thousands of dollars, they start fights, and they still can't understand why nobody likes them. They don't even want us to be here. Ernest gets attacked by fire ants, and the kids pretend to visit him to wish him well, but instead give him poison ivy. You could argue that they're just pushing him away because he's the only one that cares about them, but their backstories are never touched on. We don't really get a sense of that at all, but looking for genuine character development in an Ernest movie is like trying to find Pixar quality animation in a South Park episode. It's not going to happen. You know what I mean? But to truly show his heart of gold, Ernest still likes them. They do magically show up and become nice again, but it doesn't really last very long. Do you think if we win this contest, we could stay here forever and not have to go back to that old institute? Or you could stop breaking the law.
Not again. There's this competition at the camp so the kids start to build a teepee but the others torch it down. It's just hard to feel sorry for them when they've acted like complete douchebags for the entire movie. But hey, not only is it a Jason crossover but apparently even Harry Potter. They were all set to send you boys back to the institute when you know who stepped in and saved the day. There's a subplot of these evil suits wanting to demolish the camp to try to make money, but this old Indian dude and his granddaughter refuse to sign over the lease because they're the last of their tribe and there's all this history and magic bollocks there. But the old dude doesn't speak English, so they trick Ernest into convincing him to sign away the land, which is pretty damn evil and possibly illegal. But Ernest tries to make things right and stands up to the construction guys and gets his ass absolutely handed to him. And the kids insult him for it and walk away. This is 63 minutes into the film. They haven't changed at all from the beginning. They're still douchebags. It's not until they get given a speech about how much Ernest cares for them that they realise they're being dickheads. But it's too late. All right. The movie obviously set the standard for a bunch of running jokes in the series, and it also begins with this guy who'd appear in most of the films. Yeah, get used to the eyes, it's such a fantastic talent, he just has to show it off numerous times. Uh, as well as... <laughs> he also serves very little purpose to the plot in this one. He spends a whole lot of time trying to feed gook to Ernest, and he also attempts to do his best Jim Varney impression. No, no, not the lobster beers! No, no, not me! Oh yeah, you! He and his sidekick spent ages trying to make food and there's no real point to it. It's not funny, it doesn't serve anything to the plot, it's just to make a mess to entertain the kids, I think. During the final act when they're fighting off the construction workers, they just show up again trying desperately to remain in the plot, but they serve no purpose. I mean, Ernest uses some of their food to further an explosion, but that's it, they still have plenty of ammo. I think that's one problem with this movie. The others had a solid story to hold up a feature-length film. This was clearly them just getting their footing. The suits force a family out of their home that they somehow aren't legally able to stay in anymore for some reason. Do they have any legal right to be there? Technically, no. And then it's just Ernest doing things to kill time before the camp faces demolition. They clearly didn't have enough ideas for a full screenplay and it shows. Towards the end it does pick back up and I have to admit it is really heartbreaking to see the disappointment in everyone's faces that the camp has to close. Ernest even sings a song and it's easily the best part of the film. Gee, I'm glad it's raining there's always something to be thankful for. It's beautifully sung and acted, and Varney did it all in one take. Apparently, there was not a single dry eye in the room. He was such a great dramatic actor and truly didn't get enough credit. He makes you actually care about this camp. It's his entire life and well-being. Know what I mean? But considering it's nearly demolition time, they somehow have the time to put together this monstrosity to fight back. But aren't they technically doing more damage to the camp than saving the land? Also, the old dude signed away the lease. Ernest is breaking a whole lot of laws right now. He even comes extremely close to brutally murdering a guy. How is he not being arrested? Then the main suit shows up and tries to shoot him. Jesus Christ, dude, calm down. Basically, the magic crap I talked about earlier, there were sacrifices to prove who was a mighty warrior and apparently it's Ernest. So bullets can't hurt him, I guess. I mean, the dude could still kick his ass though, right? No, he runs away and in less than an hour, the court gives them all the camp back. Of course they do. The film is stupid and silly. It does get tedious in the middle and becomes a bit of a chore to sit through. Varney tries his best to save it with his usual shtick, but it's just a bit dull. That being said, it does pick right back up again and has the earnest charm we all know and love. I don't think it's as great as some of the later installments, but if you are an Ernest P. Worrell fan, you will still get a kick out of it.